Is the jackhammer really the best chatterbait? Are some lures made to catch fishermen more than fish? What's happening, fish and friends? Today we're taking a look at what I thought to be some of the best and worst lures of 2021. I'm also gonna be doing another video on rods and reels, but today, let's get started on a good foot and talk about some of the best lures. I'm not gonna waste any time going for the throat. Without a doubt, the number one lure for me this year was the Wacky Rig. Now, I use things like the Sixth Sense Clout, the Riot Baits Baton Stick Bait, which I actually caught my biggest fish of the year on. Of course, the coveted four and a half inch pocket rocket, the Yum Dinger, uh, but above, all others, the Missile Baits 48. This one really surprised me because it was my first year using it. Now, this is a lure that I used with a weighted wacky rig, different than a regular wacky rig, and we're gonna talk about a hook that I hate for that. But uh, the weighted wacky rig is simply a weighted uh, wacky hook. So it's got this little ball weight on it. Uh, if I'm fishing real shallow, 1 16th. If I'm fishing a little deeper, you know, six to, you know, six, seven foot, something like that, uh, I'll go to that 1 8th that just helps it fall a little quicker. But when you add the weight to it, it really accentuates the fall on these, as you can see in the pool test there. It has a little bit different, kind of a cool wobble. Now maybe this is all in my head, maybe it's the exact same wobble as all others and it's no more effective, but for my first year using it, I was really impressed. I had a couple really good days on this color, watermelon red, which I don't use a lot. Uh, and watermelon red is great in you know cleaner, clearer water. And especially the day I was fishing it with my buddy Brando, that red glitter was so obvious and so like visual, so like blaringly bright in, a, in that water with the sun. You can't help but think that maybe makes a little bit of a difference. I don't know, like I said, maybe that's a, as my buddy Mr. Bass would say, maybe that's all just a, a bunch of frog fur, a bunch of hokey. Uh, but I don't know. I think the glitter does make a difference. And on those sunny days, I mean, it really stood out. I had good luck on the regular old green pumpkin. And then uh, if I could only choose one color uh, in the missile baits, it would be their super bug, which is a mix of green pumpkin and like a black and blue with a glitter on the back of it. I absolutely love that color, whether it's a D-Bomb, uh, the 48 here, whatever, I really like that color. So such a simple bait, I mean, with this, you're just throwing it out, letting it fall, and this weighted wacky rug does all the work itself. You're just letting it do its own thing when you fall. Now, kind of on the separate end of that spectrum, we've got something that, uh, that you have to cast and reel, and usually have to be pretty careful with it, because for me here in the Midwest, I fish around a bunch of laydown wood, logs, grass, uh, and I try to get as close to that stuff as I can. That's a tip that I've given you a lot. Find wood, pitch to wood, you know, see structure, try to get as close to it as you can, bounce it off it. And when you try to do that with a chatterbait, uh, it can be a recipe for disaster because chatterbaits, I lose them more than any other thing. I don't know why. Maybe it's just bad luck, but the jackhammer, right? You saw that at the beginning of the video. People praise the jackhammer. Honestly, I've not put a ton of work in with it. I had a couple of them. Lost both of them. I did have a really good day on it, uh, the one day that I kept it, but I've lost both of mine with that open hook. I just get them snagged a ton. I'm not saying it's not the best chatterbait. I just can't say it is because I haven't used it enough. I've seen underwater footage of this one. This is the Z-Man cross size chatterbait. This guy's a little bit different because as you can see, it's got two wires up top. So I bend them over just like that, bend them down, keeps it just weedless enough to come up over wood, kind of come through some of the grass. You don't lose them all the time. I fish either a three eighths or a half ounce, depending on how deep I'm fishing. But when you come up and over wood, when it hits something, the, the regular chatterbaits, uh, you know, jackhammer, any of those that don't have a weed guard will roll over on their side and that's when you get them snagged. Now, obviously you can still get the cross size snagged if you're coming into wood and you get this caught like in a fork or something with that blade, you can still get it hung up from the bank. But when I talk to bank anglers who ask me for, you know, my opinion, what's your favorite chatterbait? Uh, it's this for bank fishing specifically fishing from the boat. If you want to throw, you know, a $18 jack camera or whatever, fine from the boat, you can usually get most snag lures out, but from the bank, you're often limited. This has a good hook keeper or a good soft plastic keeper wire there. It's got the wire guard. It's got a good steady blade on it. Uh, that in my opinion starts up almost right away. Like I have not had issues with it where some of the cheaper chatterbaits, we'll talk about one in particular, you have to like pop and like get it going before it'll vibrate. So in my opinion for bank fishing, I think this is the best bladed jig for bank fishing so far in, in my testing. Because of those wires, you can throw it, get it close to it and not be afraid. And I tell you what, if you're fishing out away from stuff because you don't want to get snagged, you will miss bites. Okay, next up, we've got a lure combo. This really does go hand in hand because when I'm fishing this, I'm usually fishing this plastic with it, with this jig. But uh, we're talking about the Cumberland Underspin. 
I really like these because compared to a, a lot of other companies, this is the old version. I've fished these for a long time. The old version was like a little bit flatter. We can see how much this one's beat up from bouncing on rocks and stuff. Uh, the new version that actually came out last year is a little bit rounded, more of like an arrow style, but you get two of these for like seven bucks, whereas a lot of other companies you get like one for six bucks, kind of crazy. Whenever I'm fishing that, uh, the little dipper or the big dipper, depending on if I'm fishing a smaller quarter ounce, I, I like this little dipper. For the three eighths, if I'm fishing a little bit deeper, I'll go to just the regular skinny dipper, uh, which is just a bigger size paddle tail. But specifically the Reaction Innovations little and skinny dipper have been awesome for me. Um, they have a pretty tight wobble, nothing like insanely crazy. If you get something with like a huge uh, like paddle on the back, it'll make that fall rate a lot slower. These are just really good for fishing uh, up shallow. Like I said, quarter ounce is what I go with this one. Uh, this is the white trash color. Otherwise, I use this color, which is like a, a pearl with a, like a brownish on top. They call it shiner. Either one of these I've had so much success with. Also the bluegill color. Uh, sungill, I want to say they call it. Sungill is another good one for ponds, but whatever it is, this white color, I've caught so many fish on both of those colors in places that don't have shad, that don't have shiners. They just work. Maybe it's mimicking crappie. Uh, maybe bass think it's like the bottom of uh, another juvenile bass. They just see the white belly. I don't know. Whatever it is, those work really well for fishing up shallow. I had a day this year with Randall where I actually left. I was already up to 50 fish and we left. Uh, I ran out of oh, memory card. He was tired. It was an insane day, but on that exact rig right there. Also important when you see fish chasing, like in the fall, if you see bass, uh, you know, hurting those those bait fish up shallow, you see them chasing bait and popping on the top, chasing an underspin like that can be absolutely money. And next, we've got a little bit of jerk bait action. Now, as far as purchasing lures, like if you go to Tackle Warehouse or wherever, speaking of, I'll have all these lures linked down below at Tackle Warehouse. Of course, uh, the good people at Tackle Warehouse partnered up with me so anything you buy over there a little percentage goes back to me so i appreciate anybody who shops over there the i'm a flit so this is one that i've really liked the past few years um last year i had a couple good days on it 2020 i mean 2021 i had a good day with it uh this is a color i caught a few on one day this guy certainly did that was another 50 fish day insane day with my buddy brando out on the aluminum kayak and you can see how tore up uh that jerk bait is on the back just from one day of fishing it. Like I said, a 50 fish day, it was absolutely crazy. We were on a bunch of feeding fish and that's when a jerk bait is great. Colder water, either in the spring or fall, I've had good days with all of them. Uh, I grabbed this one two years ago. I had a couple amazing days on the uh, the six cents jerk bait, specifically in that 4K shad, little gold, blue, white. Another awesome jerk bait. But uh, this year, really that uh, the I'm a flit uh, put in work for me. Good jerk bait. They've got a couple different models. Uh, the smaller one goes a little bit shallower. Uh, and this year specifically, I wanted to point out the, the deeper diving jerk bait because I was fishing shallow. I had one of my custom painted jerk baits, which earlier this year, again, I had like a 40 fish day on it in one of my local lakes. Uh, a color I want to try more, golden black. My buddy Brando swears by the golden black. Uh, I want to try that more. But anyway, I had a, a really good day on one of my custom painted jerk baits. And then I was throwing that and another, uh, I don't remember what the other one was, another shallow diver couldn't get bites until I switched to a little bit deeper diving I'm a jerk bait. I'll link it down below. But it, that was ex the exact one right there. That's the one I was catching them all on and didn't get the bite until I started switching to a deeper jerk bait. I know people love the Mega Bass uh, Vision 110s. I just can't bring myself to pay 25 bucks for a jerk bait. So do me a favor, comment below and let me know if you've had a jerk bait that you really liked. Uh, I really like the I am a flit. So if you haven't looked at them uh, or tried them, give those a try. Okay, we couldn't go a video without talking about a frog, right? Now, unfortunately, this has been one of the slowest frog years I've had this year. I feel like I could have had a lot better day because I broke off a six cents Vega frog, all black. I broke off my Vega Bass Big Gabo, again, all black. And then I broke off a KVD frog, again, all black. 90% of the time, I am throwing an all black frog. However, uh, a color that I hadn't thrown for a while, it was one of my old favorites. I know there's a lot of people that love this one. Uh, Alex Rudd and I joke back and forth about this color because he loves it as well, but this is the Freak. So specifically this color, the Freak and the Spro Frog. And the thing that kind of bums me out about frog fishing is this guy was already trashed. There was, I think maybe two days is all I fished it. Uh, and he's already got a big hole in him here. Because of uh, the pike that I love to catch, our toothy friends don't bode well against the uh, the soft plastic 
hollow body frog here. But I caught my biggest frog fish in quite a while on this guy, a little over five pounds. I don't remember what it was, five pounds, six ounces, something like that. This year uh, on this exact frog, I just trimmed the legs a little bit. I like the legs to be about to the eye or to the hook uh, deal there. Trim those up. I didn't do anything with the hooks. Spro hooks are extremely sharp. That's what I love about spro hooks. Uh, very good. They are kind of flat with just a little bit of a point up, you can see there. So if you wanted to, you could bend those hooks up just a little bit. Uh, but when I'm fishing around pads on a bunch of cover, I usually just leave them like that. The, the spro body frogs are so soft. I usually don't have an issue with them. So if you're in the market for a frog, uh, you can't ever go wrong with the Spros. I feel like they're a great middle of the road, not too crazy expensive. They don't have a bunch of bells and whistles. Uh, they're just a frog that always works specifically uh, that freak color. Okay, rounding out the list of my favorite lures, we gotta talk about the spinner baits. Spinner bait are something that I always throw. Always throw the spinner baits spring and fall. You can throw them more, but those are the times around here in the Midwest that they work the best for me. Um, going kind of through the line of, of lures, I threw this one from Battle Baits. This exact lure, this exact trailer, uh, chartreuse orange bright. It has one of these big turtle black back blades and like gunmetal nickel or whatever. Um, this one I caught like a four and a half pounder on, I want to say. Uh, I was throwing one from a subscriber, Sangamom Outdoors. Uh, I lost that one afterwards, but I caught like a four and a half pounder on it. Uh, and then caught multiple threes and I think a four on the one from Cumberland Pro Lures. So usually a white with chartreuse is what I go with or like a white with like a green pumpkin. Something like that to mimic bass, crappie, kind of bright. It just kind of stands out. For whatever reason, white and chartreuse works really well around here. The biggest thing I have to stress with a spinnerbait is getting it into the wood, bouncing it off things, getting it as close to that cover as you can because as a kid, I mean, this was my favorite lure and it kind of became out of necessity because you could cast a spinnerbait out and throw it, right? You cast it, crank it, cast it, crank it. And then I started to learn, well, the closer I get to this wood or bump it, even though I might get hung up, I'm getting more bites there. And as time passed, I really realized the importance of throwing that spinnerbait as close to cover as you can. You want a little bit of disturbance, a little bit of wind, a little bit of cloud cover, a little bit of stain to the water and hit stuff. Get it as close to the cover as you can. I wish I could play the uh, the Darth Vader music. Dun, dun, dun. But we're talking about the lures that I, I didn't like. Okay, number one on the list, you've probably heard of this before. Uh, it's the Mustad Skitter Blade. When I bought them, I was pretty optimistic. I'm like, you know what? This is a pretty cool deal. The blades fix directly to the nose of this bait with a wire, so it kind of goes in a circle. However, uh, as you can imagine, what happened was this whole lure went in a circle and it had a tendency to spin. Uh, I put different trailers on it, paddle tails to things like flukes. Uh, for whatever reason, when this thing would kind of get caught, I don't know, uh, it would spin. And I felt like it didn't start up right away. You had to give it like a pump or two before this would get going. So the design was cool. I also thought, oh man, for bank fishing, this should be pretty good because it's got a wire guard here that hooks up onto the hook. And I was thinking, dude, this should be great. It's got a couple wire soft plastic keepers. In theory and in look, it looks awesome, but I've heard from more than five people that this is not a good lure. So I don't know what kind of testing went into this from Mustad. And again, any of these lures that I'm talking about that are on the not so good side of my list, I don't hate the companies. Uh, obviously Mustad makes some of my favorite hooks, the, the KVD Triple Grip. But I'm just saying this specific lure uh, was a little bit of a fail. Fell a little bit short to all the other bladed jigs out there. Speaking of bladed jigs, number two is the Guggen Clickbait. Now, I actually don't even own one of these. However, Randizzle does. I got to throw it once uh, and check it out. Uh, and he was telling me about his experiences and showing it to me one day. Now, the problem with it was it wasn't a horrible lure because actually Randy caught a really good fish on it. However, I don't think it should be labeled as a chatterbait or a vibrating jig because it's really hard to get down in the water column. Randy was saying he was watching videos on it, like 15 minute videos where you could tune it and bend the wire and get it to dive and do all this stuff. I'm like, dude, why don't you just fish a, a chatterbait? And he had the same thought. He's like, yeah, I would just rather fish a chatterbait, right? If you have to mess with the lure for 15 minutes to maybe get it to dive a little bit, I don't think it's worth it. I don't want to have to buy a vibrating jig and mess with it that long. But I think the clickbait was just kind of that. I think it was a clickbait lure that was supposed to be amazing and all this stuff, uh, but I think it missed the mark. Next up are two lures that I don't even own. I know, crazy, right? How can you judge a lure that it's bad without even owning it? Well, uh, I can give my side of the story why I think they're bad and why you can do so much better with other lures. The first lure is the Lunker Hunt Skitter Lizard. 
Where do I start? Uh, okay, so if we're talking about a, a lure for topwater that is not snaggable, which I think is kind of what this deal is, right? It's a lizard that puts off a commotion. You can take it through muck and stuff they show on the commercials. Why not just fish a frog? Because listen, one of the biggest problems with the frog is, is the hookup ratio, right? When something is coming over the top of them in slop or you know whether there's some movement on the side of that, they miss it. They just flat out miss it. And it's something that happens a lot with, with frog fishing. Now, you make that lure even bigger with a tail and a whole bunch of crazy commotion, how much more do you think they're gonna miss that? And I know some people say, well, there's like a hook in the tail in case you get those short strike. Listen, if I'm gonna fish something weedless like that, a soft body frog, uh, I would go to like the Teckle Sprinker frog uh, as opposed to the lizard. Now, disclaimer, I have never used it, uh, but that is kind of my thought process and thinking of it. But you can disagree with me in the comments if, if you think. The second lure are the, are the Pokemon lures. I think those are from Dual Realis. I would need to check. I'll, I'll check it out. But uh, okay, so my deal is with this. Normally, I wouldn't have even brought this up. But I had a handful of people, maybe six, seven people who said, do you think this could be like one of the best topwaters of the year? It looks really cool. <sighs> Especially if you're new to fishing. There's so many other lures out there that, that are proven that, that will work and they are anywhere as expensive. I think those are like 30, 40, 50 bucks, something like that, crazy. You can buy Head and Spook, seven bucks. Learn learn a walking bait. Rebel Pop R, like what, seven bucks? Heck, the Teckle Sprinker Frog, even like 13 bucks, but that baby's like weedless. You're, you're not gonna get that snag. So again, I wouldn't have even gone down that road because I, I think it is kind of like a collector's item, kind of like a gimmicky deal. Oh, and that's cool if you're into Pokemon. I never got into any of that stuff. I, I never got it, but if you're into that and you wanna get it as a collector deal, cool. Maybe you'll catch some fish on it. I'm just saying for your newer folks that are out there like, Depot, like, can you test this? I think it'd be a really good lure. I don't own any. No, I think there's a lot better picks out there. Let's switch gears and talk about hooks. I feel like hooks get overlooked by a lot of people, you know? Any old hook will do, it's, it's really the bait that, that makes the, the difference, right? Well, let me tell you what, a hook that I have not liked and I've given it multiple chances over the years and my hookup ratio on it is horrible. It's the VMC Wacky Weedless. I've tried the larger size, this is what, a one-aught? I've tried going with a larger size three-aught. Uh, I don't care, I just, I have not had a good hookup ratio on these. And I'm not talking bad about VMC, I like their hooks especially the VMC Nico hook. This happens to be a weedless one. It's got like some fluorocarbon uh, like guards there. Good hook. Uh, I would certainly recommend this over the, the wacky weedless. But for whatever reason, this guy, and I even had a day this year where I tried it out again. This was all I had in my bag. And I'm like, well, you know what? I'm gonna try these going back to it. And I missed so many fish that day. Uh, it was crazy. I think my favorite right now is this Rayugi. Uh, so I was using this one, just the regular cover. It's got like some, uh, like the little nylon, you know, we gear like that you would see uh, on like a jig. It's got some of that on it. Uh, Why not has been my favorite. I also got some of these. These are the heavy cover. And these have like a couple wires on it. So it's supposed to be just a little bit stiffer than those other ones. Uh, but these hooks specifically have been great. Good hookup ratio, extremely sharp. They do cost a little bit more, but if you think about it, what's the only thing that keeps that hook pinned? The hook, it's the hook itself. So uh, if you find a good hook you, that you believe in, even if you spend a little bit more, I'm I'm okay with that because uh, the hook is the only thing that's gonna stay in that fish's mouth. So the last two that I have on my list are a couple lines. Number one uh, is this Dominate braid that I got off Amazon from Angry Fish. Never heard of them before, but you can see there it says, uh, the Smooth Handling Superling. And I th think they meant to, uh, to say Superline. They didn't even get the uh, the spelling correct on there. Maybe that should have been uh, uh, an indicator that I shouldn't use this line. I used this and had multiple breakoffs. I used the black line. Uh, I even tried the purple. I got it. Thought it looked kind of crazy, you know, to give it a try. But uh, I've used this as backing since because I have zero confidence in this line. So if you see it on sale, I saw it on sale super cheap on Amazon. I'm like, let let's see. Maybe all braid. This is braid. Maybe all braid is the same. It's definitely not. The other line, I don't even have the spool anymore, was the uh, Power Pro Max Quattro. And I got a lot of hate on that video where people are like, Debo, what are you talking about? The Max Quattro is amazing. However, most all of those people said they were using the lighter line for finesse stuff. Uh, they marked it as super smooth, really castable, which it was. Uh, when I took it out, the castability of that line was amazing. However, I was using it for frog and I think I had 50 pound. They didn't have anything higher the place I went locally. Uh, I think 40 pound was all they had in the regular Power Pro, maybe even 30. Uh, so they had 50 in the Max Quattro, and I was like, yeah, I'll give it a try. But 
I broke off multiple times on that as well. And let me tell you what, one of those was a fish that could have very well been my PB. The way it hit, the way it waked, the way it hit that frog, uh, I wanted to cry that morning. So again, I've only experienced the 50 pound and I was using it for really hard hook set stuff. I had some people message me after, after I'd said this in a couple videos that I'm like, I'm not a fan of the Max Quattro. They're like, Debo, you should know better. Uh, you shouldn't use it for hard hook set stuff. Cast and retrieve things, maybe top water like treble hook things where you've got a softer rod or going to the smaller line like 10 or 15 pound braid is usually what I use on my spinning rods. Uh, they say it's a lot better off that way. So take that for what it's worth. Uh, I've heard other people say Max Quattro is some of the best line out there. Uh, I can only show you the experiences I've had and tell you, and that was with the 50 pound for frogs. I will never use it again. All right, so do me a favor and comment below. Let me know what some of your favorite and not so favorite lures were uh, from 2021. Doesn't mean they have to come out in the year. I'm just talking about things that I used, tried, things that I really liked, I thought were some of the best, and things that I didn't like that I thought were meh. Today's subscribe feature and friend is my guy, Ken Starks. Ken, thank you for watching and supporting. Uh, and thank you everybody else who watches and supports. My channel has done so much better than I ever thought it could have. Uh, I've been kind of relaxed on the videos. December, winter and me don't really mix. I kind of go into that winter depression thing, but getting my butt out of it, uh, I'm gonna put some more videos out. And this is truly one of my favorite videos to just give some honest opinions. I feel like people don't do that enough on YouTube. And I, I think you have to kind of preface it with, listen, this is just my uh, my interaction with these lures. Doesn't mean I hate the company, but hopefully it, uh, it helps some people out. So comment below and let me know what you think. Uh, but otherwise I gotta edit. So thank you all for watching and until next time.